Hello and welcome to this Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is Lecture 15, The Yield Curve. So, what is a yield curve? Well, you may have seen before in your life a diagram that looks an awful lot like this. We have a curve that does this. We've got a logarithmic scale on the bottom here, which is a time kind of thing. So, one day, one week, and so on and so forth. So, we'll go over one year. We'll try 10 years, and we might go up to, say, 30 years. On the left-hand side, there'll be something that's measured in percent. So we'll put a few percent in here, see how far we get. So we got 1% all the way up to, let's say, 7%. And that is the yield to maturity of the bond you're buying or the interest rate effectively. What it means is if I'm going to borrow from you for, say, one day, then what's going to happen is we'll go up from there, we'll go up on the yield curve to there, and then we'll go across to figure out what the interest rate should be that we should be borrowing and lending from each other at. So what's that? About 2.1%. So if you want to borrow money from me for one day, that's going to cost you 2.1%. Now, just before we carry on, we're going to assume that this is kind of an AAA rated situation. There are different yield curves for different credit risks, and we'll talk about that in a couple of lectures with a lecture on credit risks. But let's just assume for one moment that we're all on the same yield curve, whatever we're doing in today's lecture. Now, what this curve also means is that if you borrow from me for, say, 10 years, say there, then... Again, we go up to the yield curve and then we go across to about there. So let's just put the lines in for that so we can see where we're going. And then we go across to there. And what that means is if you want to borrow money from me for 10 years, you're going to have to pay, I reckon that that's about 6.2%. What's causing us to lend at 2.1% over here and lend at 6.2%? 2% here. Now it's to the same person from the same person. Now what's going on here is we have a thing called liquidity preference. Just before, I'll put a bit of liquid in here just to kind of remind us of that. Just before we carry on though, although this is the kind of normal yield curve that we normally see, the yield curve's like a moving kind of snake. It can kind of be anything you want it to be. It can be any shape at all. So it could be this shape, it can be this shape, it could be that shape. It just depends on the weather, on how you're feeling, on volatility, on chaos theory, and a million other things. And it will generally be whichever shape you don't want it to become. That's the problem with the yield curve. However, having said that, it does usually revert to that particular shape. So what's causing this shape? Now, there's two main reasons. The main reason is credit risk. As time moves onwards, someone becomes more and more risky. So if I'm lending you money for one day, I take a look at you and I see you and you're wearing a nice suit. Let's imagine you're a man. And you've got nice square glasses on, you've got nice kind of short hair, you've got a nice smile, you're wearing a nice dark tailored suit, nice business suit there, you've got shiny black shoes, you've got nice hands, and you look extremely respectable, and you just want the money for one day. You look pretty good. Now, as time goes on, let's imagine you in, say, 10 years' time. In 10 years' time, you could look a lot more like this. You could be having all sorts of strange hairness. Uh, you could be living in Thailand. You could be spending your days surfing. You could be wearing Bermuda shorts each day. There's some nice Bermuda shorts there. And there's your bronze legs. And you're riding a fantastic surfboard. So that's what you could look like in 10 years' time. Now, I would say, just using conventional theory, the person on the left there is far more credit worthy than the person on the right. You may disagree with that, but let's just go with it for the moment. You're more likely to be going bust in the longer term than you are in the shorter term. You become a worse risk the more time that's involved. So remember, Jensen's inequality. The greater amount of risk you're taking, the greater amount of reward you need to receive. So as time goes 
onwards, then I need to receive more return from you if I'm lending money to you. So that's the first kind of reason. The second reason is more to do with liquidity. I mean, this is liquidity preference theory. And the idea is based on the lack of opportunities if I lend to you for a long time. I want you to imagine this. It's 4.59 p.m. on a Monday afternoon, and I am Mithril Money Bank, and I have $100 million sitting in my pocket, and I don't know what to do with it. I've got one minute to decide what to do with it. You phone me up, your mega bank, and for whatever reason, you require $100 million for one day. Okay, so I take a look at you. You've got a nice credit rating. You're unlikely to go bust. We're not in a kind of credit crunch situation. I know you've got a guarantee from whichever government of your choice that they'll bail you out if there's a problem. So I'm prepared to lend you the money for one day. You're a safe bet. Also, I can't decide what else to do with the money. I've got nothing else to do with the money. I've got one minute to go. There's no chance of anyone else phoning me in that time. So I'm happy to take 2.1% for one day. At least I'm getting something. It's better than nothing. However, if you're going to borrow from me for 10 years, not only are you much more unlikely to pay me back because you've turned into a kind of surfer dude spending his entire 24-hour periods on surfboards, the other problem is that if anything comes up in the next 10 years, I can't invest in it with my 100 million. You've got my 100 million and you'll probably invest in whatever comes up. So let's say after maybe one year, somebody invents nuclear coal fusion. Well, you'll take my 100 million and you'll invest it in cold fusion and you'll make an absolute fortune for yourself. I ask for my money back from you because I want to invest in it. And you say, go away, don't be silly. I'll pay you back in nine years time. I've lost the cash liquidity, the ability to be able to invest in new opportunities as they arise. Again, because I've lost that opportunity and that ability to have liquidity and cash to invest in these new opportunities, I'm going to have to charge you more because I'm also suffering a risk that I'm going to miss out on opportunities. So those are the two main reasons why the yield curve looks like this. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the inverted yield curve, which is the dangerous twin version of this. And the inverted yield curve does something a lot more like that. And if you're doing something which is called riding the yield curve, if the yield curve ever inverts, then that can be a particularly dangerous situation. Okay, look forward to that. See you next time.